Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to St James for this special live service. Please do have a seat. This is a space to come together before God in the lead up to Christmas to remember our loved ones who we miss so much. And I hope you will find peace and comfort here. Later in the service, there will be an opportunity to come forward and to place a star on our special lives tree in remembrance of our loved ones who are no longer with us. So please do, if you don't have a star already, collect one from the back of church if you would like to. We're going to uh, begin our service by lighting three of our Advent wreath candles as a reminder of God's light in the darkness of our world. We are who we are today because of those whose lives touched ours. God does not ask us to forget those we've known and loved, but sadness has to be tinged with gratitude for lives that shaped us, for hands that held us, for voices that inspired us, for love that enriched our lives. Believing that those we remember this afternoon are held in God's embrace, we trust that we will meet them again in a place where there can never be farewells. So we make our prayers for those who now belong to whatever it is we mean by heaven. First, our private prayers, which we make in silence, then a spoken prayer to gather up all our thoughts. So we keep a moment of silence. God of all creation, who cannot be contained by our boundaries, by our definitions, light from beyond the galaxies, See without a farther shore. You are present in every place, in every moment in history. You are here and now. Help us to know today that those from whom we are separated by death, by its long silence, its aching absence, are each of them in your presence, that beyond our horizons, beyond our boundaries, beyond our understanding. They are held in your embrace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we're going to stand for our first carol, which is carol number 79, O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 79.
and we remain standing for the responses. Life is a journey of many roads. Sometimes we lift our faces to the sun and sometimes there is a hard journey through pathways of pain and fear. We remember today that God is with us and nothing can separate us from his love. Hear these words of hope and assurance. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death, along the paths that lead to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be your strength. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. You bring to light those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. And please do sit for our readings. Our first reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe up every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. Thanks be to God. A poem by David Harkins. You can shed tears that they have gone, or you can smile because they have lived. You can close your eyes and pray that they'll come back, or you can open your eyes and see all they've left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see them, or you can be full of the love you shared. You can take back, turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember only that they have gone, or you can cherish their memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back. Or you can do what they'd want, smile, open your eyes, love and go on. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God.
This afternoon, we've come together to remember all the special people in our lives who are no longer with us because of their death, either recently or longer ago. For some people who may have known our loved ones, their memories may have faded after they said their farewells at the funeral. But for us, as families and friends, our dead do not cease to exist, exist in our hearts. Neither do they depart from the love of God. So why should we forget them? Instead, here today, we will celebrate their lives and the memories we share. Doing this may bring back other memories of sadness and sorrow that they are no longer with us in the physical sense. But we're all here because we believe that love extends beyond this physical being. And being present with each other this afternoon, we can find the inner strength that comes when we share something deep and meaningful and tender with others who are going through a similar sense of grief. Grief that can be like a tidal wave, which picks you up and tosses you around and dumps you onto unidentifiable surfaces and then casts you out onto an unfamiliar beach, devastated. And just when you think you might be recovering, the wave sweeps over you again. The simple truth is that when we lose somebody we love, we do shed tears and we have every right to do so. However, Christian teaching can be helpful because it doesn't pretend that death is of small consequence. It is the most horrible thing that happens to anyone. And the death of someone you love is among the most horrible thing that can happen to you. And taking this seriously means that there is, despite what we're often told, good reason to cry. Jesus himself, we are told, cried when his friend Lazarus died. Jesus didn't try to explain it away as God's will or use some pious platitude like only the good die young. Jesus cried real tears like us. One of the prayers that I will often use in the funeral liturgy is to ask God to bring healing to broken hearts that you will wipe away tears that well up inside, that you may bring peace where it is needed and strength to carry on. It is a recognition that God can be with us in our mourning and sorrow, and there will be suffering to go through before we feel anything like cheering up. But today we remember our loved ones all those who once belonged to us and from whom we are now separated. We give thanks for those who by their lives lit up our own lives. We remember the special ways in which their lives touched ours. We acknowledge their passing has left a gap in our life and so we find, feel a continuing sense of loss. Not for a week or a month or even a year. We may never get over it not so long as we ourselves draw breath. However, as grief's journey inevitably distances us from the moment of death, as the acuteness of grief subsides, we are able to gain a fuller, more authentic appreciation of our loved ones. So this afternoon, we have gathered to express in some small way our undying love for those we see no longer, yet who remain very much a part of us. To remember them and to acknowledge the wealth of their human being. To remember them for their own sake, not just as grandparent, mother, father, sibling, son, daughter, grandchild, spouse, partner, friend as someone who enriched our lives immeasurably, yes, yet also as someone who fulfilled many other roles in other people's lives, who touched the world and made a difference. So whatever we're feeling right now, just notice it 
and allow it to be. We've been through a lot, but love is all around us. We can allow ourselves time to share memories and tears with others who also know love and how it hurts. And we can hold on to the assurance that as we remember our loved ones by stating how they lived and changed our lives just by being, that death will not have the final word. Our loyalty to our dead is not just about missing and longing. When we pray, God grant eternal rest, it is a sign of our trust in God and his promises. We look back with thanks, but we also look forward with hope for the dead and for the living. The 19th century Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard expressed it in these terms. The work of love in recollecting one who is dead is thus a work of the most unselfish, the freest, the most faithful love. Therefore, go out and practice it. Recollect the one who is dead and just in this way, learn to love the living unselfishly, freely, faithfully. Amen. And we stand for our next carol, carol number 70, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear, number 70 in the hymn books.
we remain standing for the responses. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year, and when it ends, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are part of us, and we remember them. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for all those we remember before you now. We thank you for the memories we treasure, for the love we received, for the good we saw, and for the years we shared. And you're warmly invited to sit down and to come forward and to place stars on our special lives tree in memory of the loved ones you remember today. Please, if you could come forward in bubbles and just allow space between different bubbles. Our choir are going to sing uh, the Nativity Carol by John Rutter and then our organist is going to play uh, well, we all have time to, to place our stars on the tree.
And let's stand for our next carol, Carol 84, Silent Night. And please do sit or kneel for our prayers. Let us pray. Prayers of thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, we remember in your presence those we have loved and we give thanks for those who have been part of our lives. For parents and the love which brought us to birth, we praise you, Lord, and bring you thanks today. For mothers who have cherished and nurtured us, we praise you, Lord, and bring your thanks today. For fathers who have loved and supported us, we praise you, Lord, and bring you thanks today. For children entrusted to us as parents, we praise you, Lord, and bring you thanks today. For brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, and beloved partners and friends, with whom we have shared our homes, we praise you, Lord, and bring our thanks today. For all our memories and the times we have shared, we praise you, Lord, and bring you thanks today. Eternal God, you see face to face our loved ones who have died. Tell them that we love them, that we miss them, that they are not forgotten, 
and cheer us with the prospect of a day when there will be no more death or parting, and all shall be well, and all shall be one. May they whom we remember tonight be among the first to welcome us to heaven, where with you in unending love, we will share the feast of your everlasting family. Until that day, keep us in faith, fill us with hope, strengthen us through love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we finish our prayers of thanksgiving by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we stand for our final carol, carol number 81, once in Royal David City, but we are not singing verses three or four. good to see you all this afternoon. Uh, Reverend and Linda and I wish you God's peace this Christmas and uh, you are very welcome at any of our Christmas services. There's more information at the back of church. Our service ends with the blessing. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you.